Have you heard the term quantizing, but are not exactly sure what it is or how you can use it effectively when composing? Hi, it's Simon from Composing Academy, and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through what quantizing actually is, when to use it, and also when not to use it. Quantizing in its most basic form is a way of easily correcting rhythm or timing mistakes, which can occur when playing in music live into a DAW. I'm going to be using Cubase to demonstrate quantizing today, but the techniques and strategies I'll use will apply to just about every other DAW out there, such as Logic, Ableton Live, Reaper, or Pro Tools. So when writing music with various instruments or layers in a DAW, such as Cubase, in order for everything to work together well rhythmically, we want to align the notes of each instrument to the grid system, which represents the bars and beats. When most of us play music into DAWs on our MIDI controllers, as we're human, we're probably not going to be able to get the notes exactly in time and lined up to the grid. You can see here that I have some percussion hits which I've recorded in. They're an extremely simple rhythm, just four quarter notes. If I zoom in here, you can see that some of the notes are not exactly lined up with each grid line. This one is slightly ahead of the grid, and this one is slightly behind. Now if my piece was just made up of this one instrument, it wouldn't really matter about these small timing errors. However, if I were to record lots of separate but similar parts and instruments to build up my piece, if each instrument had various small mistakes, the effect of this sloppier timing would start to be heard more and more as the effect would be amplified. Because of this, we want to have all these hits here all snapped together to each grid line. At the moment, I have my grid set to quarter notes or crotchets. You can see that we have four grid lines or blocks per bar. Now watch what happens when I click the Q button up here or press Q on my keyboard. All of these notes have now snapped to the grid line, which in this case happens to be quarter notes. These notes are now perfectly lined up and in time with Cubase's grid, which will make it easy to add further instruments later on. So that's quantizing in its most basic form. The correction of rhythms by shifting each note to its nearest grid line. So let's say instead of a rhythm which has just quarter notes or crotchets, what if I want to include say eighth notes or quavers? To begin with, I'm first going to change the grid so it represents quavers or eighth notes. You can now see there are eight grid lines or blocks per bar, each representing one quaver or eighth note. So let me record in my new rhythm, which is made up of a mixture of crotchets and quavers. So let's zoom in, and again you're going to see that my timing was not perfect, most of the notes are behind the beat. If you haven't done so already, you want to make sure that the 1 8th note resolution is selected before actually quantizing the notes. If another value was set, such as quarter notes, all of the notes would shift to the nearest crotchet, or quarter note, destroying the quaver based rhythms I have. So all I have to do now is click the Q button, and watch how all the notes snap to the nearest 8th note grid line. We can of course go further, with more complicated rhythms containing a mixture of quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. So first I'm going to record my new rhythm in. And as the quickest value of notes I played was a sixteenth note, let's set the grid to display sixteenth notes. As per usual, my timing isn't perfect. This time, most of the notes are ahead of the beat. I've already selected the correct resolution of 16th notes, so again, all I have to do is press the Q button, and look, everything magically snaps to the nearest 16th note. Now let's say I had these 16th notes here, but I accidentally left the resolution on 1 8th note. Quantizing would shift all of these 16th notes to the nearest 8th note block, like so. You can see that this has completely changed the rhythm, so you do have to be extremely careful to make sure you select the quickest or shortest note value that are present in the recordings you make. Luckily the undo function, or control or command Z shortcut, will undo the previous quantized function, returning your music back to your original rhythm. Although quantizing is an incredibly useful and time-saving function, you should be careful to the extent that you use it. 
Most music is about the human performance, so some small rhythmic imperfections in your music can actually really help to bring it alive. To alleviate this dilemma, I tend to only quantize certain instruments when I'm composing. My general rule is that anything with a short attack, such as most percussion and articulations like short strings or short staccato woodwinds, should be quantized. Instruments and articulations such as long strings, or a legato French horn line say, don't really need to be quite so strict with the timing, so I tend to leave these, providing I'm reasonably happy with my MIDI performance. As you've seen, DAWs represent no values by a fraction, such as one quarter for crotchets or quarter notes, or one eighth for quavers or eighth notes. For beginners, this can take a little while to get used to. So here is a quick chart detailing various note lengths with the equivalent value for DAWs. Once you've gotten used to the basic concept of quantizing, you'll discover that there are a lot more extra functions in most DAWs, which help to go further with quantizing. If you're playing in triplets, for example, there'll be a resolution such as one eighth note triplet. Most DAWs also have the ability to set the quantized strength, meaning you can change how much or how severe the quantizing is applied. This can be useful for trying to keep as much of a human feel as possible, while still making sure that there is some rhythmic correction occurring. Most DAWs also enable you to quantize the note lengths, which can be useful when trying to make each note an exact length. So that's a quick breakdown of quantizing. Remember it can be an incredibly useful tool, but also be careful to not overdo it, and try to limit quantizing to notes with quick attacks, such as piano or percussion instruments. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more composing tips and tricks. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comments below as well.